contrast incidence and prevalence. You can go back and look at some of our other videos and we discuss how to calculate prevalence. Comparing these two, incidence is the number of new cases over the number of people at risk. This is actually looking at new specific cases coming in, not a total overall. So if you look at this picture on the right, this is a great explanation of how this works. So incidence is just like the faucet. It's the new water that's coming into the faucet and filling up the bathtub. There's nothing to do with anything that's already in the bathtub. There's nothing to do with things that are in the pipe yet. It's what the new water that's coming in and starting to increase in the volume of the, the bathtub. Prevalence, however, is the number of existing cases. So this, in, using this bathtub example, that's the number of cases that are in the bathtub over the total number of people in the population. So how many people want to use the bathtub versus how many are actually in it, okay? So in terms of prevalence, prevalence is about equal to incidence in diseases that are short duration. So we think of common colds. You only last for five days, maybe a couple weeks. The incidence and prevalence are going to be about the same. The new people coming into the bathtub are going to be about equal to the people going out and recovering, and it's going to be about the same as the number of people that are in it. Prevalence will increase or will be greater than incidence for chronic diseases, so things like diabetes. So we have a large number of patients that are living with diabetes, and that will be a larger number than the new people coming in. So as we increase prevalence, therefore we're going to increase our positive predictive value, and we're also going to decrease our negative predictive value. Let's think through a couple other things that could affect the incidence and prevalence. If we increase the survival time, so we're able to treat better, that means we're not going to change incidence. There's still going to be the same number of people that are coming up with the disease, but we're going to increase the prevalence. So there's not going to be as many people dying uh, through mortality. If we increase the mortality, so more people die, we're not going to change the number of people that continue to get this, medic to get this disease, but we will decrease the prevalence. If we increase the recovery, so the number of people that come out of that tub, we're not going to change the incidence. It's still going to be the faucet's still going to be pouring in, but we're going to decrease the prevalence. So increasing mortality or increasing recovery will not change incidence, will only decrease prevalence. If we increase our vaccination efforts, so we give someone a vaccine to help decrease the, the actual onset of a disease, then that's going to decrease the incidence. Decreasing incidence is going to decrease the prevalence. And if we lower our risk factors, so we lower the smoking that could increase our risk of having lung cancer. We're going to lower the disease incidence and in turn lower the disease prevalence. Finally, let's discuss precision and accuracy. Precision is also known as reliability. We need consistent and reproducible results. This doesn't have any absence or it doesn't have any random variations. This is just going to be how reliable or how precise a measurement is. Accuracy, however, is more of a validity. It's discussing validity and how close our test results are to the actual true values. We don't have systemic error or bias in this test. So obviously, error or bias will actually decrease our accuracy. So let's look at these bullseyes here. So if you throw a dart and you throw it in the pattern of A, None of these darts are close to the bullseye. None of them are close to each other. There's not, neither accuracy nor precision in A. However, if you throw the darts and you hit B, you're not really hitting close to the bullseye, but you are hitting close together. So there's precision being that you're precisely hitting the same spots, but it's not accurate by hitting the middle of the bullseye. In C, they're all equal distance around the bullseye, so there is some accuracy in that you're hitting the same distance from the bullseye, but it's not precise. And then in D, as you see, all of the, the darts are landing close to the bullseye, they're close together, so in this case, D shows us the best typical D shows us the best results because the results are precise and they're accurate. So we want to have studies that are both precise and accurate, but some studies may need to be more reliable so that we can reproduce it. Some of them may need to be more valid. 
or they're closest to the true values, but they may be scattered a little bit.